Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Tara EJ here, Choose Love. I'm here with author uh, Brad Boldris today. Hello. <laughs> hey, Brad. I feel like you're just one of those people that I've known for a lifetime. I, I feel like we've just, it's just been a long time. That's because I'm your little brother. <laughs> Why do we have to tell him? All right. I didn't want to admit everything, but here we are. I'm the baby. I'm the baby. You, oh, yeah, you are the baby. We'll have to tell them how important you are later on. They have no idea. Some of these people don't know how important you are. About the meme, you mean? Yeah, that you sent the meme. Yes. Let, let me tell you about Brad. Brad Bolrus is a local contractor that believes what goes around comes around. He treats each client how he would like to be treated. His passion is innovating and creating new projects and ideas. You can reach him and his fully loaded work trailer ready to go at Good Karma Construction. Brad. That's right. Brad. So you just recently, well, not too recently, moved back to Phoenix. November. November. Last year, yeah, 2019 and decided to start a new business, Good Karma Construction. I've started one several times, uh, but none of them ever really stuck. But this time I felt like I had the resources and the customer base, I guess you could say, and the support from family, of course, and friends. So I decided to come back out. And it's been going great ever since. I get to build stuff every day. It's different every day. I meet new people every day. And it's just been wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I know you're busy because I've tried to call you like three times this week. And um, I'm you, sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> you must have been busy, <laughs> busy, no, busy no, building no. something for we somebody. Gotta, do we have her back? Oh, do we have her back? Okay. We could Go talk ahead. about building bridges, building bridges with family. and But yes, I'm glad that you are building things and you're doing your thing. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, there yes. was a connection thing. It's been a it's been a wild year, and to be able to work through all of it and enjoy it's been pretty good, pretty great. Did yes. Anyone ever mentioned that you have amazing blue eyes? Once in a while, I've heard that. But mm -hmm. I've heard the rumor. You, you have. It's been going around. It's been going around. <laughs> so my fiance loves them. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, tell Amber we all said hello. I will. Um, so what did you think when your older sister asked you to write in a love book? Like, tell us your thoughts there. Are you surprised? Well, Is this an unusual thing? Or Yeah, my older sister, see, she's always trying to um, get me involved in all this love stuff. And... You know, sometimes I can, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't always have the time, but I do definitely have the best times doing it. And when you asked me to write something, I said, well, geez, I got, I got a million stories that could go on forever. People that know me know that I could talk for days and not let anyone have a word in edgewise. So I'd love to write my own book. However, I've never really known where to start, so to speak. But this time it was great. I think we should do a ton more. All kinds of books. All kinds of stories. Everybody likes stories. I Good agree story. with you. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm really glad that I was surprised that you said yes. And I'm so excited that you did because um, people may not know that we've been on this kind of like love journey. And let me explain that because that could get weird. Um, Back in 2000, what, should we tell them a story, Brad? The, the, the main one? Yeah, I think we should give them an intro because some people may not know how. Well, let's give them the quick version. You want me to give the version? Give the quick version. Let's hear I'll I'd love quick. to hear it from your side. I'll give you the oh. quick version. Oh, My God. older sister is constantly having issues because people pretty much were treating her very badly because she decided that she wanted to practice Islam. And of course, it was new to our family. It's never really been uh, something we grew up with. You know, we were from a small town. I'm sure everyone's heard that old Jim. You know, 
my our mayor was the barber uh the part they leave out of that is when he used to hold on to your shoulder with the clippers running in the background kind of letting out a cough or two over your head while watching wrestling uh that's my memories of uh, of our mayor but anyway small town politics and all so once my sister decided to uh you know do that and venture out it made us all have to kind of grow with that and uh you know you can either grow in a positive way you can grow in a negative way you can grow apart uh our family's always been so close i couldn't imagine when i hear stories of people completely giving up on other family members or uh you know not being as close because all of a sudden they find out something that interests them that might not interest you and then all of a sudden uh you talk less and less and you know it's very hard for me to to uh to see that happening in our family anyway so uh my sister had called me one final time uh you know and before the meme had been sent you know the patented meme and uh you know one day i just i thought about it and i'm like you know who really cares what other people think you're my sister you're great um my other sister's great. My mom and dad are great. I mean, everybody that we, we hang out with is great, you know, and, and why, why are you letting this bother you so much? You're such a good person. You shouldn't have to let that bother you. You know, if you truly are happy and want to do that, then uh, do it. So I sent the meme, uh, of course. What was uh, the meme? You got to tell people. Uh, I can't see the haters with my love glasses on. And it had this little guinea pig with pink heart-shaped glasses kind of like here in my rear view I got a little pink heart there I keep mm -hmm. and uh I just you know I sent it because realistically everybody just needs to be told that you know I could tell her that 50 times in a row but it's only gonna matter the one time it really matters the one time that she's in a state of mind where she just it clicks and that's what happened and then the next thing you know you're running around with all the glasses. You're running around with a story. You're running around and you're doing amazing things. You're talking in front of people, which has never been our strong suit ever. We're, we're, you're on the news. Talk me into going to D.C. to do a commercial. Talk me into flying things I would never want to do ever. And we had a great time and we still have a great time. We go to, you know, we've been to functions and concerts and I went to, you know, the several different uh things and it's just uh to see you do all that and to overcome your fears of doing that has helped me kind of overcome mine and made it a very fun thing uh, a very you know uh it's always been great the, the, the only times i remember it not being great were not brought on by us it was brought on by the inability to meet for me to be able to block out the negativity of others that are either too ignorant to understand and i say ignorant in the term of they don't really want to learn more than they know they think what they know is what they know there's nothing else to really do with that and they can't branch out they can't understand they can't grasp it because it doesn't happen in their family or maybe they were brought up different maybe they don't have a close relationship with others but we have so once i did that once we kind of overcame all that and got used to the the jab got used to the 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 customs got used to all of that and it, it started to change me in a great great way it made me understand that uh you know when you're looking at negativity in the world and when you concentrate on it and when you think about it you tend to see it all the time you go down to a car dealer you buy a brand new toyota truck the next thing you see every day is a toyota truck all over the place where'd all these toyota trucks come from they've always been there you just never saw them until you had one same thing is for me with love and happiness until you see the happiness that you can have that you can possess you very rarely see it in others as well when you see it it might be annoying to you you might be like oh wow these people are so you know they're over here just laughing and having a great time nobody's that happy i can't tell you how many times in my life i've said that no one's that happy well, you know what? They are because, you know, sometimes you just get it a little bit faster. And when I say get it, I mean, you know, the point, like the point is everybody deserves the right to be happy. Everybody deserves the right to be healthy. Everybody deserves a chance to 
be creative and just be able to be themselves, you know, be themselves, you know, who are we to judge? You know, how perfect are we? You know, I mean, I, you know, I got all the dirt on you if I needed to, you know, I mean, we keep trying, right? Try it. Try it. <laughs> We're good. I'm just saying, it, you know, Go let there. people be who they are. And why does it bother you so bad? Why does it bother people so bad that other people are doing things that really shouldn't affect you in a negative way unless it's something personal to you, which rarely it, it very, very rarely is, you know? It's because you're looking for it that you see it that way. That's what I noticed about myself anyway. So here we are, years later, tons of glasses later, memes. memes. Although there is only one meme, really. I mean, the one and, and only true meme. And you sent the meme. Yes, and I do, as you notice, love to talk and further that story. <clears throat> but. I think I definitely think we should write more books. We should write stories on everybody, family members, people that have had good and bad experiences, just like we did. But I wanted to write one from the, the you know, in our family, my sister, you, is the unique individual that went out and tried something new and different. And uh, by you doing that, we were all kind of forced to do that, too. And, you know, it really just helped us all kind of be able to deal with things, to, to find the good in things and to find the good in people. Uh, I love all people for the most part. I mean, there's nothing that anyone does to really bother me unless they are stomping on, say, the freedoms or rights or happiness of others. But that doesn't mean if somebody does it once, twice in their lifetime that they're not deserving of a chance too because you know none of us are perfect all the time no that's for sure i mean so you would i mean after we did this whole love glasses revolution which is what was created out of the meme that you sent one day i mean wouldn't you say like our whole family is just so much more intentional about looking for the good i mean because you always let's be real you are always a good-hearted person you've always been a person that helps other people um like probably to your detriment sometimes but you just you give and you give and you give you're a giver and so you always had that in you for sure but i'm just yes. saying it, do you think that it was more intentional like that you looked for more opportunities once we decided like okay we're just gonna love the world and not you know Cause you're a you know, big guy. I mean, look at you with your full tattoo. Show them, show them all your stuff and show them your bald head. I got, I got a few. I mean, we go out and it, we make quite a pair when we go out in the world. So we do, we do. They don't understand how we, uh, they don't understand. I've had people even ask me, how's your sister Muslim and you're not. And I said, well, it's not, it's <laughs> not a disease. Uh, she just chose it. And you know, it's a, uh, it's a religion. You know, so that's the kind of thinking, though, I'm saying people ask that and it makes me understand, OK, we don't educate on stuff like that. We were never taught stuff like that. Um, I did all my learning after you went out and and tried it and, and loved it. And it fits. It fits great. And it just our family. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a long ride. It's been it's been interesting, to say the least. But until I honestly started looking at myself as a good person, as a giving, kind-hearted person, um, a lot of things hadn't changed. You know, you think you have patience the first time you're in traffic, something pops up and you're, you're yelling already. You look, that's not patience. You're saying it and you're trying to live it because that's what you're told you should do. But this year and last year, I've learned truly what, what it means to take care of yourself, to give yourself a break, and then by doing that, you find that you automatically give others a break. Uh, there's no reason to spend all your time concentrating on giving to others that sometimes might not ever reciprocate to you or anyone else. You don't have to do it for a reason. I used to just do it because. The one and only person in the entire planet that I would never do it for was myself. That's what's changed for me this year. Last year, 
you know, going on 2021, I'm sure everything is going to get a lot better. I've calmed down. I've become uh, very patient. Um, I, I am able to say no to people and not feel so guilty that I need to stress myself out to make this happen for this person because I don't want to feel like I look or look like I feel like a bad person, you know, like I, like all of a sudden I'm selfish because I don't want to get up in the middle of the night and run over to somebody for something that they really could have avoided that we've already talked about weeks before, you know, or, or any instance, you know, you know, the ones I'm talking about things that, you know, I don't always have to do for others to make myself look like a good person. I finally realize I am a good person. The stuff I'm going to do things for are good people. And if they're not, then I will try to spend the entire time while I'm doing it to convince them to be a good person. That's all. You know, you, you have just told, told this whole segment is self-love. That's what you've just told me you've discovered. You've discovered yes. self-love. And, and yes. one of the things that people will say about self-love is be selfish when it comes to self-love. Be selfish yes. because there's nobody going to take care of themselves more than you. And we know that, Brad. We know that. It's, it's hard, right. though, because we've been just, you know, we're those giving kind of people. And you feel bad if you're just stop giving for like a minute. But it gets better every month. Every year. It's going to be so. I mean, I haven't always known that. It took me a long time. And, you know, back and forth between me, you and the rest of the family and stuff like that, you know that it's not all the time. But as long as you feel okay, and as long as I feel okay, and as long as, you know, the parents and the siblings and everybody, as long as most of us are doing okay, we can help lift the others up. And that's what it's about. You don't have to just do that to family. You can do that to friends. You can do that to strangers. I carry a cooler in the back of my truck full of Gatorades and, and waters, and I don't always have money to give to people, but I always have a cool drink in the summer. It's Phoenix, you know, it, it, whatever it takes to show somebody you know, it doesn't have to be something of monetary value. It can just be the fact that you care enough to notice that they might need something and to maybe try to do something about it. If I was a billionaire, I'd build tiny homes all over this place for people. And people would say, yeah, they destroy them in a month. You know, a lot of them are doing drugs. A lot of them are doing this. There's always a reason in a lot of people's minds, including my own for a long time, of why you shouldn't help why you shouldn't feel guilty about driving by somebody and not helping because it's easier not to look at it it's easier to not notice when you put a label on it oh they just do drugs they don't know uh you know once i got to meet the uh my lady the love of my life i realized that you know with the people have psychological problems people have uh you know health problems people have financial problems and family problems you never know what they have we're so all gotta, one step away we're all one step away from you have to give a break you have to give them a break and you have to treat each individual different because what's good for one might not be good for another and that's okay you have to try at least if more people did that and you know i've noticed looking around tiktok <laughs> a lot of it is uh people are trying I think some of this stuff has brought everybody closer together this last year, to be honest. Uh, as, as, as much as it seems like we're getting tore apart, I think it's doing the opposite. I think people have to step up and pick a side, whether it be uh, politics, religion, races, everything that's going on these days. Everyone, when I say pick a side, I mean pick the side of humanity or pick the side of selfishness. You want to just do your own thing and be your own world do that but it's a very lonely place that's all yeah it's way more fun um joining forces with people who um are doing i mean it i found that when i have all the tribe of people who are doing things in the world like it's it, it motivates you because when i'm down you're up you know Asia. yes there's pe people that love it people People look forward to what you say and to what you post and the pictures you do and the and the, the the memories you make and the things you do. You travel to different states, different countries, different places, and you're always pushing forward. And people need that. Who else is going to do it? I need that. We all need yeah. that. 
like for, doing that stuff is absolutely selfish for me because if I didn't do it, Brad, I would, I'd be home crying or calling you like I do and crying, making your day miserable. No, never, never. I just happened to be in a better mood than you the day you called. <laughs> and that's when I sent the meme. But there's a reason I, I had that like meme you... in my, you know, there's a reason I had that meme in my phone. I don't think we ever talk about that. Why did I even have that meme? Yeah, because cause... I had it for myself to remind me like, and, and I never used it. I never, I guess it never clicked till after you used it and ran with it and made it click for me. So it, it, it's just without that, you know, I always joke I sent the meme, but that's about all I did. And then I just always try to talk you uh, and, and remind you that you're a great, beautiful person, that you don't need the approval of others. But we've always sought that our whole lives. We've always wanted to feel like everybody is happy with us. And you know what? If they are, they are. And if they're not, that's okay, too. We'll get them there. <laughs> we'll get them there. We'll get them there. No, it's one true. book at a time. <laughs> I love that. I think I think you're right. We're we're a lot alike in the way we handle things, and sometimes we gotta just let stuff go, and yes, and and know that what we're doing is right for the right reasons. Yeah, I mean, and have more lunches. We don't have enough lunches. Uh, What's the measurement for that? Because I've had enough lunches. What do you mean? Like, do you mean together? Lunch. Like just side by side. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lord knows we had enough lunches. I'm just saying, like, we we uh, converse over them too. That would. Be oh, you mean you want to get together? Together. And have yeah, we could even have them together. Got to be real clear because it's, you know. Um. So well, if we didn't say it. Nobody would have known. I I don't know. It just. Are we being, are we recording still, right? Okay, got it. Yes. Okay. You know, this is really good information for real, Brad, because, um, you know, it's been, what, 20 years that I've been a Muslim? 20, like, a long time, right? Right before 9-11, actually, if you want to get technical. And, you know, I had my journey with it. But it's really interesting. And, you know, we won't tell your story, but your story talks about this, talks about me and and the conversion and what that meant for the family. And it really opened my eyes to see another side because I only had my side. I don't know if I really stopped to think about how maybe it all affected somebody else. Like it just felt like I did this thing and you should be okay with it. Cause you know, why wouldn't you be? You know, you know what though, Tara, your whole life you waited to do stuff because of what you thought it would do to other people. This is the first time you did something for yourself and the first time you didn't worry about it. And look how good it worked out. Wow. That's all. If you had thought about what it would do to us and how I would have to at parties, like not tell anybody that my sister might be Muslim because they might flip out because they're, you know, the true patriots who, uh, you know, America, everything's about, you know, just that whole idea, some of it. I've had to hear a lot of things over the years. Yeah. And honestly, I wouldn't, basic, I wouldn't change yeah. a thing. You know, that it really weeds out the friends I know I'm going to keep and the company I know I'm going to keep. And uh, if they aren't on board, you know, there's no way I would ever give up my happiness, my view of my sister and my sister's views to ever keep a guy in the on Facebook, you know, uh, 20 miles away that I see twice a month when he needs something from me, you know, it really, uh, I really had to rethink everything this last couple of years on what I want, what I want out of life. And, uh, writing this was just a tip of the iceberg. I, I have a story I could write that would take up, you know, thousands of pages instead of thousand words, but let's do that. Let's work on that. I like it. I mean, you, Brad, you're always really inspirational. Whenever I call, you're upbeat. I mean, really, the majority of the time, you are the are someone that the whole family goes to. You're kind of like a glue. You're holding stuff together. I mean, what's next for you? Like, what what do you have in your mind for next steps? I mean, what's chicken what's, thighs and some corn? I like. I'm gonna make some corn on the cob. Uh, 
I like to make the, uh, I don't know what it's called. You know, the one they put the mayo on there with all the spices and the, and the Parmesan cheese. Uh, Mexican stuff. corn, I'd like to say. I, I don't know if that's the name of it. That's the term I've heard Randy it called. Walters loves that. Another author. Oh, yeah. And I, I've been is trying it that to, elote? Uh, yes, yes. I've been trying to master it, and it's been working out pretty well so far. Not going to lie to you. Um, that's what's very, very next on my mind. <laughs> and then after that, you know, just being a good, uh, good person. Just be a good person. Don't be, just don't be a mm. loser. You know, be a good person. When I say a loser, asking people why they're doing this and doing that and doing who cares? What are you doing to make the world a better place today? Yes. That's all the only question you ever got to ask. And as long as you're living within those guidelines, it really shouldn't matter. You see somebody in trouble and you walk by, you drive by, you find a reason not to do something. That's your problem. You go home and sleep with that at night. You know, I, it's up to you. It's up to us. It's your own choice. That's all. That's Simple. Good. That's good. what I do. Every day I wake up, I get up five o'clock every morning. I got a job tomorrow for a person that needs uh, some uh, ADA rails put up in their home because they had a, a medical procedure. And that's the kind of jobs I love more than anything because I know truly tomorrow I will be able to help a person in the best way. And then I get to charge them whatever I want. If I don't want to charge them at all, if I want to do it, you know, if I want to do a work and help out and just make a trade or whatever I have to do, I work with my customers because they deserve it. You know, if, if, if they are in a spot, I help them. And that is the best form of help. As long as I can help myself, as long as I have enough to pay what I need to pay, anything after that is, is extra. And how much extra do you need in this life? You can have all the money you want in the world. It doesn't do anything for helping you sleep at night. That I do know. I made half as much money this year as I did last year, but I feel three times richer this year. I don't know. That's all I can say. All I know is it's the cutest thing in the world when I'm interrupted by your 80-year-old customers who are now besties with you. I mean, they are that. honestly, Brad. They Those are that. They the conversation, if I could charge for conversation, I'd never have to lift a hammer again, for sure. But that's I mean, the best part sweet. of it. They, you just, you invest in people and, and they, they like you, you're likable. I would like to think so. And you know, it's the hard, the only person, that, the biggest critic I've ever had is myself. Correct. But for some reason this year, I'm kind of letting it happen. You know what? I am pretty good person. I am pretty nice person. It just takes me a little time. That's all. And thanks to you, uh, you know, you up the game so much. I can't sit around and just do nothing anymore. I have to do something, you know? Yeah. Cause I'm going to, that, that's out. how I feel. I, I just, I've met too many of your friends and colleagues and educated people. Uh, you know, all, a lot of people you hang out with and, they can't all be wrong um and they're not always right either but you have to be able to every person in this world in this life has a life experience has something that happened to them that's what steers their decision making one way or the other i made a lot of my own problems in my life and that steered me in one direction for me to keep going in that direction and blame everything else but me does not make any sense in, in any book you write so what i did was i just realized i take accountability if if i would love myself just a little bit more each day things have been getting better each day i've been losing weight i have this i haven't even really been trying uh i, I just been you know I, I i don't eat and eat and eat and eat and eat all day to try to make myself feel better like i used to or whatever it is uh you know slowly but surely i'm coming around trying to uh get rid of all the vices and, and just be, be a good person, be a good, active, hardworking, giving, empathetic, apathetic. I don't know if I'm using the right words, but be a good person. The one. Yes. Be a good person. You are a good person. That's all. I'm You're a good person. <laughs> you are. Well, I'm going to come over. Yeah, we've come You're along. You're the oldest, so I get it from you, I guess, right? 
<laughs> all I know is um, I'm so excited that you said yes when I when I asked you to do this and um, that you're that we're on this journey together. It's like for real because yeah. it's way more fun. And I always say, if we're not having fun, we're not doing it. Like I want to have fun, you know. And I hear you. Pretty pretty soon we're gonna lose you. We can't even see you anymore. Well, maybe I'll come see you tomorrow. I'm sitting outside just because I got the dogs and the kids and everything going on, and we're all studying for stuff and tests and doing things. So I, you know, I just wanted to have have my have some time off the light here. I get a little get a little of this. <laughs> There you oh. go. <laughs> in my truck. No, it's awesome. I mean, thank you for taking your time. You are seriously a busy guy. I know. Well, I'll come see you tomorrow if I can. I'm getting up going to work uh, downtown early, early, early. So I'll, okay. I'll get a hold of you tomorrow. Okay. Coffee. Don't forget the coffee. Yes. Oh. Love you, sis. Love you, too. All right. Bye. Bye, Bye y'all. <laughs> Bye.